Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Danny at Lawrenceville Garage. Today we're getting back on the Toyota Tacoma and we're doing the motor mounts for the LS swap. Let's check it out. Hey, this is looking at the driver's side motor mount. Now remember, this is a truck that's equipped with the four-cylinder engine. So I'm not sure what the uh, V6 mount would look like. And I'm not sure how much different the four-wheel drive version of the frame would look like uh, as far as this goes. But I believe the mounts would be the same on the four-cylinder. But you can see there's two holes here, here, and then these tabs. These tabs are kind of in the way. I'm going to need to get rid of those. I've got some plates that are going to fit over this and mount using the two factory holes. But these little metal tabs need to go. So I'll be right back, and uh, we're going to get rid of those. I'm going to make a cut and just follow this line right here this angle and just cut the tab off. Okay, now the mounts are in place using the factory holes. And there's a uh, 1.25 inch slot on either side that will allow, allow some movement front and back. We also have the sliding plates on the motor itself. So between the two plates and the amount of adjustability they have, we should be able to fine tune the placement of the engine against the firewall, the uh, transmission shifter within the hole, the amount of front uh, space we need in the front between the radiator and the front of the engine. But this will help a lot. So what I'm going to do is, uh, getting rid of those tabs, allow this plate to fit in here. And what I'm going to do is mount, uh, set the plate in place like this on both sides, and then we'll drop the motor back in with the uh, tabs cut that are going to attach kind of in the middle here and on the front. The bottom edge of this plate is exactly even with the bottom of the frame mount. That way we may make sure that it uh, remains horizontal with the truck. Okay, now we're back. And again, here's the driver's side uh, mount. And it's able to slide around. And here's the passenger side. And it's able to do the same thing. So these are in place. Now we just need to... Uh, set the motor in place and uh, fine-tune that position. Okay, in the beginning process, I used some of this fiberboard. There's a sheet of it here. I bought this stuff at, at Hobby Lobby. It's kind of a styrofoam. It's black on both sides. It costs a few bucks a uh, sheet, but it's much easier to handle than metal. I originally uh, bought some plates. These have been uh, drilled, and tapped, and kind of screwed with. And what I did was I laid this on top of it and I cut out a, these are, these are four by six and I just cut out a four by six. Uh, they originally came with four holes. This was a universal mount. Uh, I drilled the center holes because I measured the holes between, uh, the distance between the holes that are on the frame of the Toyota. So originally, if you didn't look at these top and bottom holes, this would match the holes in the slots for the tabs that the factory mounts had. So I just simply transferred that information onto this piece of uh, fiberboard, uh, cut the holes in the slots, made sure it would fit. Uh, this is what I would refer to as maybe version 1.0. Uh, in drilling on the plates, uh, I could see I needed to elongate the holes. Uh, I know these are very crude. Uh, I had to do it with the drill press. The slots, in order to elongate the hole, uh, created a different position for the slot. Um, that's when I realized at that point, you know, we needed to do something different because of these little tabs. So version 2.0 is what we just, uh, what we're going to look at right now that's in the truck. And they are uh, a little bit smaller plate than this. They don't have these two holes. In fact, they're, they're made to my specifications, which... Uh, I drew up a diagram. He has a machine that can cut a uh, steel plate for me to make it look right instead of uh, my butchery. Uh, and that version, we did away with the slots because we're going to cut the tabs off of the frame. We won't have these four holes because don't need them. And we'll just have two slots, elongated slots, uh, for the bolts to slide through. And they'll be uh, drilled at this size, which is what size bolt I'm using. And then here's the top mount. The top mount uh, mounts to the this mounts to the engine, obviously with four bolts. And 
we're getting ready to do that now. We've got the engine lifted up. We're going to mount these to the motor, and then we're going to drop them into the engine bay so that we can get the tabs. And these are the tabs that I have that were uh, made. And I've got four of them, and I've cut them. They're slightly different lengths because the plate, uh, when we weld it, will be under here and against here. So this tab on the left will actually be on the side, and the tab on the top will be on top. That's why they're a little bit different lengths. And, uh, but they're the exact same angle. So we're going to mount these up to the engine, mount this mount to the engine. It's got the tabs cut to the correct length that I wanted. And the distance between the bottom of this mount and this plate, when it goes in place like this, is 1.75 inches. So plenty of room to attach the, the bolt, get your wrench in there, uh, and have a little space uh, to boot. A little slower process, but uh, I think in the end for this, it produces a better, a better cut and more what we need. Both, both cut now, ready to put on. So you have to put the motor mount bolts in from the back side forward because uh, on this side especially where the air conditioning compressor is, if you put the bolt in from the front, you couldn't because of the length you need, this is in the way. So it has to go in from the back side. Okay. That too tight. Snug it up so I can still move it once it gets in. Now right now the plate, the plate is positioned in its uh, rearward, rearward most position. As far back as it'll go. It goes forward. It'll go all the way to the end of the mount. The bolt, the motor mount bolt almost touches. Probably when it's snugged up, it might actually touch the compressor. That's why there's no way that this is going to be in that position. We're going to start it in this position and just slowly push the engine back. There should be plenty of room. But the only way we can tell is to drop this thing in there and find out. This tilter is a big help. You've got to get a lot of angle to get this in here. It'd be a lot simpler if the bell housing was not on it and if the front accessories were not on the engine. But we need those things on there so that uh, we can tell what our clearances are. And this is the way to do it. And when lowering with the bell housing on there, you've got to do it carefully so you don't beat up the firewall. Okay, I've got the motor set down in here. So I'll look at some of the alignment um, from side to side. Yeah, this is in the way, but it appears the bubble is right in the middle as far as uh, left to right. The angle, based on at least the uh, valley cover, it looks like it's about four and a half degrees or so. I'm not too worried about it. I prefer closer to four. But once we put the transmission on, there's a little bit of movement uh, within the mounts on the motor and on the frame uh, in the settling of the full weight. So I would expect to be able to get my half degree there. Down here at the bottom, let me see if I can get in on that a little closer. Uh, I've got it to where the distance between this top of this tab and the end here is within 0 0.05 millimeters on both sides. And on the front, it's lining up with my mark. So it's in perfect position right there. Let's check out the passenger side. And uh, if I can get in here with a little bit more light. And it lines up with my mark on the front tab. And the distance from the top to this tab is, again, within 0 0.05 millimeters of the other tab. So they're, they're almost identical and uh, the engine's sitting well. You may think, well, okay, is the engine sitting too far from the firewall? I've got about an inch and a half to two inches I can go back, and looking at the way I've got the mounts, I can get 
at least an inch there, if not more. And then on the top mount here, they're in the farthest position. So the, this can slide back at least another inch to inch and a quarter. So I should be able to get a total of at least two full inches uh, of movement to slide the engine back. I don't want to go too far just because if you go far enough, you'll make contact with the back of the AC compressor. And I don't want that for two reasons. One, I don't want it next to it because any movement could potentially crack it. But I've got my uh, manifold that goes on the back of the AC compressor. And though I've got one that's a tight fit, I don't want to get it so it's so close that it may come close to the mount. It may actually sit above it, but it's hard to tell until it's actually mounted on here and you push it, push it against it. But I believe there'll be plenty of clearance there as well. So I think we've got them uh, as perfect as we're going to get them for right now. Uh, we're going to see about getting them uh, tacked in place. Then we'll pull them out, fully weld them. And at that point, we'll test fit once again to make sure everything uh, fits well. And then we'll send them off to be powder coated. All right, the units have now been welded and put back into place. And you can see it looks pretty good there. I've got some movement. Uh, it's really juggling uh, pushing the motor back because uh, you want plenty of clearance in the front, but there's other obstacles to deal with as well. In this case, I've already test fit the exhaust manifold and it fits fine, but it comes really close at contacting the steering in two different points, here and here, just barely. But we have some modifications we're gonna make to that and we'll show you that in a separate video to, uh, to clear the steering. On the front, uh, the radiator and fan shroud or I should say the radiator and the electric fans are about six inches wide and when they're mounted in here we got I believe plenty of room my question is going to be for this I don't think this is going to work at least at first glance I don't think this will work I think this needs to have a 90 degree bend to it to uh, bring it away from what's going to be right in front of it but uh, man, we'll find out when we get to that point on the passenger side the light over here. Uh, again, it's welded up. Uh, fitment wise, the exhaust manifold, I tried it, fits perfectly. Dipstick tube is fine. The coil pack uh, fits perfectly under here. It won't interfere with the uh, AC line. Where there is a small problem, you know, get down here. I put the manifold I talked about for the uh, air conditioning on to see how it fit. And while there's plenty of clearance between the, the mount and this, manifold these come directly out from the side and you can see how much room there is about the thickness of my finger between this uh, the two outlets or the inlet and outlet so that's really not going to work even if a 90 degree fitting were to fit onto those threaded portions uh, it would be so close to the shock tower it's just not going to work right um, probably have to make make a manifold or have one made actually that uh, would have the bottom port this lower port going straight out the bottom and the upper port maybe at a 45 degree angle and then straight down as well so that both lines would come out below the compressor and then come up and over this way and here's one of the lines here that we're dealing with uh, won't know for sure until we get more things in place but right now I can see that is a potential issue and you just don't know sometimes when you buy parts early uh, you find out later they're not going to work and then it's a little too late to return them or whatever and this one not an expensive part but yet another part that probably will not get used so for today this is it as far as getting the mounts made they're good we just got the parts back from getting powder coated they look really nice got them in a nice matte black looks good uh they're urethane bushings so we've got some high temp grease here. We're going to, uh, when we put the bushings back in, we're going to make sure that we put a little bit of grease on the inside because you can see the little convolutions in there where the grease can get. Uh, grease on the inside, a little on the outside, and a little on the outer edges here as well so that inside these brackets, uh, just in case there's any movement whatsoever, there won't be any squeaks. But guys, that's it for today. Thanks for stopping in. Thanks for watching. Hope you got some useful information from the video. We hope you will like and subscribe and follow us as we continue this project. Until we see you next time, thanks for watching.